Nowadays, most if not all of the racing games are simulation racers that most players use either for eSport or replicating real-life racing. Newcomer would think that's the entirety of racing genre, but it isn't. There's one point in time where another type of racer dominate the market. Arcade racer. Sure. They are not as realistic as sims, but that's where you get the most fun out of it. Accelerating at high speed, drifting through tight turns without worrying about flipping over, and performing maneuver that defy physics while jamming to soundtrack. Those reasons alone sums up all of the fun you can have in Arcade Racer. Once upon a time, those games were everywhere. So many developers came up with the most bizarre idea, whether it's kart racer, vehicular combat, or futuristic style racing. The PlayStation 1 is home to those games. You probably heard of Destruction Derby, Ridge Racer, Wiped Out, etc. But the console is also home to some of the most underrated racers, and Rallycross is one of them. One of my favorite games from my childhood. Today, we will talk about it. Welcome to my review of Rally Cross. Rallycross is an arcade-style rally racer released for PlayStation 1 in January 31st, 1997, developed by Sony Computer Entertainment America and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. The name Rallycross came from the real-life motorsport that share the same name. In Rallycross, drivers race around in closed circuit for several laps and also perform joker lap which is an alternate path that must be used by all drivers at least once in every race. The path is generally longer, and they require right timing and also flawless driving in order to prevail. But when you look carefully at the cover art, it feels like it's inspired by Dakar Rally, which is another top tier motorsport traveling from Paris all the way to Dakar, and the track proved it too. But before we get way ahead of ourselves, let's just mention the core element of the game. Let's talk about the control, which are very basic. Hold X to accelerate, square to brake, and D-pad to control the car. The controls for the most part are pretty responsive, as the car actually responds according to your input. But when you look closer, you will find the controls to be a little sensitive as the smallest touch on your D-pad will make the car change steering easily and if you're not careful enough, you can lose control of it. Especially on tracks with tight turns, you will be all over the place. My advice is just slow down while navigating those areas. You will thank me later. The brake button is pretty useful. By holding down the brake and the D-pad together, you can execute a drift which will be very crucial if you want to win a race. It can be satisfying watching your car drifts around a hairpin turn. There's also a clutch button but I never use it since the brake did most of the job so you probably don't need it too. There are also two important controls you need to know. First up, the gear shifter. See, in most racing games, you just have to switch gears on manual transmission but here, automatic is no exception. Every time you start a race, you will notice your gear is at neutral where you probably think it's not important but when the race gets underway you will be so wrong by pressing r1 or l1 you can change the gear from neutral to between reverse or first gear which adds a little realism to the game i mean not even gran turismo or forza lets you do that that small detail is actually interesting but also can be a little messy whenever you're stuck at a wall you have to tap the shoulder button to switch back to reverse mode. I always find myself holding down the brake button every time and wasted a lot of seconds trying to get back on the right way. It can be chaotic when the AI are right behind you. Sometime I was just having a good race and accidentally hit the L1 button which brings my car to a stop which can be frustrating. Part of me hated it 
but that was back then. Now it slowly grew on me. The other important control is the rocking mechanic. Whenever you flip your car during a race, you can use L2 or R2 to make your car rock back and forth to create momentum that turns your car back onto its wheel, which are pretty easy to do. I just imagine it was the driver who came out to turn their back onto the actual direction which you can see to the car window, further proving that this is more of a darker rally game instead of your traditional rally cross. So don't worry, it's not a game about sentient car driving on their own. We haven't reached the dark future just yet. I love this mechanic, as the game wants you to do everything yourself. They won't hold your hands by giving you a reset button. You have to count on yourself, just like in real life, where no one is gonna help you all the time. And that explains all of the control you need to know for the game. Pretty easy to understand and pretty tight once you get the hang of it. Moving on to gameplay, there are two modes. Single race and season. In season mode, which is basically your championship, contains three categories. First up, normal. You go through multiple races in a row with three other AI drivers and whoever with the most point at the end wins the title. There are three difficulties that change the amount of races you had to do and also change what cars will your rival be using. Completing all three will unlock you more track variation and of course the cars. The rivals in this game aren't that hard to beat. Even on the hardest difficulty, you can dominate the race pretty easily. But that's not to say it's a cakewalk. When you are stuck behind one of them, it becomes a hassle. Catching is a thing, passing is another thing. You're often stuck behind some rival that can hinder your pace. The biggest risk is trying to make a move, especially on a narrow track where one small mistake can put you way behind everyone else. But as a certain race driver would say, if you'll no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. The AI aren't perfect and they are pretty inconsistent too. Sometimes they finish every lap without any mistake, sometimes they just crash and flip everywhere. The most annoying part is during the first lap where you have to get by everyone. They will always be in your way and their drunk nature can cause a big mess. They occasionally try to take each other out including you and it's pretty hilarious when you look at the replay. Each race can be chaotic and I love it. Other than the AI, you also have to worry about driving skills where it can help you to win. As far as I know, there's not a single rubber banding issue that I'm aware of. I even won some of the races with a big gap. So it's safe to say, your skill matters the most. Next mode is the head-on where both you and the AI race against each other in the opposite direction one-on-one. -on -one. The race uses tournament style format which include semi-final and final. The winner is decided by the best 2 out of 3. Finish both stages and you will get the most point before proceeding to the next round depending on your difficulties. Here is my problem with this mode. The tracks aren't designed well for both side racing. On forward, I could go flat out at this section but then on backward, I end up coming to a crawl. The track just doesn't flow well and I always find myself getting left behind by the rival, especially on higher difficulty where you have to do it if you want to unlock more stuff. Third mode is Mix, which is a combination of the first two modes I mentioned earlier. At first, it's your standard race, but then the top two finisher will square it all off in Halon style race. Whoever wins that will get the most point and heads on to the next race. Finishing all three modes will unlock every tracks and cars as well as the final mode. Suicide, which I like to call As if head on wasn't bad enough with one car going opposite direction, now you have to face off against three AI on the opposite direction and trust me, you don't want to play this. Sure, you might be able to dodge them on first lap, but next lap? you won't be lucky. The different changes in elevation of the track doesn't let you see what's ahead and by the time you see it, it's already too late. You will be smashed by every single one of them. It's like trying to finish Sonic 06 without encountering any glitches. It's impossible to even come anywhere near first place. And as far as I know, you don't unlock anything else for winning the mode. So save your sanity and avoid this at all costs. I'm wondering if the developer is actually drunk, 
just to watch the players suffer. If any of you that make this are watching this right now, I have few words for you. You are f***ing crazy. Once again, this mode wasn't seen in other racing games, so credits to them for adding this, I guess. Those are just jokes. I hope you all understand. Next up, presentation. The graphics still age pretty well. Sure, they are blocky texture in some parts of the game, but for a game that released in 1997, it still holds up well. You rarely see any popped up for things in the background, and the frame rate doesn't drop, which means you won't experience any slowdown. There are a total of 6 tracks ranging from easy to hard. Oasis, Island, and Mines are beginner's track. Stadium may look tough at first due to the bombs, but it's actually manageable, so it's intermediate for me. Alpine and Licks are considered by me as the hardest with twisty corners everywhere that leaves no room for every. Sadly, some of the track just didn't translate well in different layouts. For example, in Oasis Backward, taking the bottom route will lead you to turn hard left that includes two rocks on each side at the end. Sometimes I carry too much speed and ends up slamming into the right walk. If I slow down much, I will hit the left rock. Next is Island Backward. There's this one turn that I cannot get through easily despite doing that in the forward version. I either carry too much speed and hitting the wall or I just slow down too much and ends up losing a lot of time to the AI. Each track also comes with three variations which changes the path you can take in the race and also affect the weather. Tracks like Oasis and Legs closest different areas might add more much to slow down the driver Stadium opens up a new area, the most unique one is Alpine. There are shortcuts in Alpine that can really change the type of your race. By using it, you and AI can gain a lot of advantage, but it's actually hard to enter the area since the road is slippery and you could easily miss it due to the area being really narrow. All of the tracks are pretty short, even the longest one can take you just around 5 minutes, and I'm fine with it. Each track are pretty short. I guess when they say simplicity means the best fit spell here. The tracks are short, which is good because you can remember the track layout easily so that you can be better next time you come back for the track. All the tracks got their own personality and fit well with the theme of rallying around the world, either between WRC or Delta Rally. Next up are the cars. They are actually based on real life counterparts. The buggy is Citroen ZX Rally Raid. Hot Rod is Pajero T3, Sedan is Audi Quattro, Ford KA is your hatchback, and Ford F-150 truck is obviously the truck itself. Each car has different stats that affect speed and handling. The hatchback and buggy are fast but can also flip easily. Sedan is slow but better at handling and avoid crashing, Hot Rod being the neutral. Truck is the only car that have great speed and handling, so it makes sense you can unlock it after beating the game. Same cannot be said for the engine sound though, as all of them are the same thing. Once again, all of the classes combined prove that this game is actually based on Dakar Rally. Okay, how many times I gotta say that? Unfortunately, I find the main menu to be lacking. All you got was just some menu with some background images that relate with the game. There is no music to pump you up, only some sound effect when you select something. Even games that came out before this got menus that look more interesting than what we have here. The biggest offender is the season mode felt pretty bland. As if I was watching a slight show of my annual report with few seconds of jingle in between. Even worse, when you won the title, all you got was just some still images. That's it. No epic music, no cutscene, nothing. It feels like all our effort are wasted for something not rewarding. But in the end, don't let that turn you away from playing the game. You know what they say, don't judge a game by its menu. Or something like that. Speaking of which, let's talk about the soundtrack which I can safely say are absolute bangers. Every circuit have their distinct music that fits well with the theme and it became very memorable. 
Oasis makes you want to go on an adventure. Island makes you want to explore the mystery of the nature. Alpine makes you want to climb to the top of a snowy mountain, no matter how tough it can be. Those are my opinion regarding presentation. Some good, some bad. Lastly, let's talk about the miscellaneous. First up, atmosphere. I really love the atmosphere in this game, as you don't feel alone while racing around the track. There are things that actually make each track unique on its own. In Oasis, you can see some small rocks falling down the ledge that you climb. In Island, you can hear the wildlife in the background. In Mines and Alpine, you can hear the crowds cheering and taking pictures. In Stadium, you literally hear thousands of crowds in the stand cheering very loud. Those experiences felt like you're there with them too. It makes you feel less lonely while racing and don't feel like driving in a ghost town aimlessly. Another fun part is the damage for the car. Should you hit the wall, your car will become dented with lots of scratches as if your car took a lot of beating. Something that Gran Turismo wasn't able to do for several installments. Your car can be damaged but it's just visually. If you look closer, you will see that damage actually reflects their personality. What do I mean by that? Take for example, Elta, the blue sedan. He was just a normal kid trying to race, but then you hit the wall and he makes the face where it looks like he's crying. Same goes for second, the yellow sedan. Just another racer trying to win, but then he became this psychotic self. As if they are mad at you for not driving carefully. There are more examples, but I will let you figure it out. It makes you feel like the cars have feelings and you end up ruining their mood. It could be just me thinking too much. Okay, now I have the feeling these cars are actually sentient. And that's my full review on Rally Cross, a really underrated racing game on PS1 that not much seems to remember. It's a fun arcade racer that never takes itself too seriously and can be enjoyed by all ages. It even supports up to 4 player split screen if you have the multi tab. Ah, the good old days. In the end, the game got its fair share of positive and also little flaws that doesn't affect your enjoyment of the game. If my words able to convince you, you can check out the game on PlayStation 3 online store at a pretty cheap price. It's just my personal opinion. Yours might differ, but if you love racing game, Add this to your collection. Did you know there's a sequel released 2 years later? That's right, the game got a sequel which we'll be talking next time. So if you don't want to miss it, be sure to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss a thing and comment below what's your thought on this game and overall my review, what should I improve? And also don't forget to join my discord server if you want to talk more about me. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.